I am here with Sylvie at the Portland Japanese Gardens and we are standing at the entrance to this exquisite garden. And one of the things I love about this space is that it really, it's not just about plants, which I love because I'm a gardener, it's also about culture and, and the rich history of the Japanese people. So let's start right from this entrance gate. Tell me, tell me about that. Well, um, our entrance gate is the formal entrance to our garden. We do have another garden, an antique gate down below that's probably at least 200 years old. Wow. But this gate was designed and built for our garden. Um, it is um, an exact replica of an entrance to a warlord estate in the 17th century. You have authentic tiles, handcrafted tiles. You have little rooms on each side that would house the uh, samurai guards, the sentries, uh -huh. and you have a large doorway in the center through which the daimyo on his horse would enter and pedestrians through the smaller doors on the side. Well, and I love the, 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 the intricacy of it, like even the, the what I would call a temple bell. I don't know if that's what it's called, but yeah. there's one of those hanging up there. Well, I don't think a temple bell typically would be hung at the daimyo <laughs> estate, but we do have this temple bell, which is rung on special occasions. It's a ceremonial bell. It would be typically at a monastery rung to call in priests out banging for yeah. alms and uh, for special events and rites. Well, you know, and what I, I enjoy about this is the minute you come through the doors, you of course see the beautiful gardens everywhere, but then you get some really lovely specific yeah. stuff like over here. Let's walk over here yeah. and tell me about this specific little space here. Well, our um, Sukhavai, our water basin, uh, does at this site, we, we have the three primary elements of a Japanese garden, the stones, the water, the plants. The whole arrangement of stones is the Sukhavai or Skubai. You have a stone for a ladle, a lantern, a stone for kneeling. The stone in the back might even be a protection or a guardian stone. Uh, these basins typically, I think, uh, are found in, in tea gardens, mm -hmm. originated in tea gardens, uh, where people could just rinse their mouths as a rite of purification. Wow. Sylvia, I love that when you come to the gates, the first thing you see is this, because it really, it does define the elements of this garden. And you had mentioned tea garden, so let's take a walk and talk about that one, okay? okay. Yes. Yeah. So now, Sylvia, on the way down here, we came under an arbor, and there was a beautiful Japanese lantern in the view of it. What, what's the significance of that? Well, first of all, the arbor itself is, is an important part of our garden. It is the formal entrance to the strolling pond garden, but it frames the lantern below, which was a gift to the garden from our sister city, Sapporo. So the lantern had resided in Sapporo at one time. It's our tallest lantern. It has five fire boxes, which we light for moon viewing and other evening events. But that is a very special spot just because it, it is a tribute to our sister city, Sapporo. And the arbor itself is an example of framing, which is one of the really important techniques in, in garden design. Yeah. Uh, how um, views are framed by shoji, for example, by pruning techniques, by uh, bridges and arbors. Certainly. It certainly uh, enhances our experience in a garden. So now, Sylvia, we have ended up in the tea garden in front of the tea house. Tell me about that. Well, the tea house and the tea garden are actually one. And so many of the um, uh, aesthetics that we associate with Japan are associated with tea, the calligraphy, the flower arranging, and so on, and even just the garden itself. But if you are sitting in the tea house, the garden comes into you. Yeah. And your journey in for tea is a very, very important part of the whole tea experience itself. And then when you step back out, you go into the strolling garden again, is that right? Right, and then we end up uh, crossing the eightfold bridge and standing in front of the fabulous waterfall and uh, the pond there where our, our koi are among our most spectacular garden features. Yeah. So Sylvia, we've, we've talked about the tea garden and the strolling garden. How many gardens are involved in the Japanese garden? Well, we have five gardens on five and a half acres. Wow. And these gardens represent different periods in Japanese garden design history. We're open every day of the year. And uh, you have a different feel in the garden every single day. If I came back to this garden tomorrow at this time, the light would be different. Um, the, there would be something absolutely nice. very different. And yeah. you know what I, I think is delightful is you are celebrating 50 years. So you've got a, a really fun event for the family coming up. Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah, on uh, September 15th uh, from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we welcome families into our garden where 
We're going to have uh, an opportunity for children to visit various stations. We'll have a little map for the children and families to follow. Uh, we'll have all of our special events that typically are at other times during the year showcased in our pavilion. Uh, there will be food out in front of the gate nice. and uh, many, many activities for the children to actually participate in. Well, you know, if you've never been here before, or if you have and it's been a while, we would certainly invite you to come back to the beautiful Japanese gardens here in Portland. You can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click mm -hmm. you over to their website. You can find out all the events that are happening, the hours that they're open. Come down and enjoy this beautiful garden yourself. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Yeah, you're welcome.